Greetings to you all in Jesus' precious name. What a privilege for us to be with you this morning. And it is an absolute honor for me to introduce to you Kurt Lee Odloff, one of our son in the faith, a disciple at Revival Fellowship. And he will be sharing with you a short word. And thereafter, I'll be coming back and sharing with you on the three mentors. Many of you have responded so much on the priesthood. I've received a lot of communication messages from all over the world. Uh, some of the renowned scholars have written to me on it, and I've been so burdened uh, to carry on with that series. So don't go away. Listen to this powerful word from Kirtley and thereafter. Please do join me for a word on the three mentors. God bless you. Be blessed. Good morning, beloved. Thank you for joining us once again. It is truly appreciated. Uh, this morning, I w- you usually used to me, if you watched the previous videos, you used to me just doing the intro, but I'm hoping and trusting that you'll just stay and spend a few minutes with me as I've been granted the opportunity by my bishop to share a short word with you. And I also just want to take this moment to thank Bishop Ishtia Gill and Minister Shane for allowing me this opportunity to share word of, the word of God. My bishop doesn't just let anyone speak on the pulpit, so it's a really a huge privilege, and I'm very nervous, so please bear with me. <laughs> but basically, what I'll be sharing today, and what I'm trusting this word will do, is to push you. This word is aimed at those fires who went into lockdown long before the coronavirus came about. And basically, um, I'm 21 years old, just to give you a background about me. My name is Kurt Lee Adolf. I'm from Strandfontein. But just before we tap into the word, I'm just going to pray. Maybe close our eyes. Father God, we come before you this morning and we want to thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I pray that all those listening, Father God, all those watching the God, that you will humble us, Father God, that you will bind any unteachable spirit, Father God, that you will give us a spirit of humility, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will bind any spirit of hypocrisy as well, and and that you will open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that your word will touch those who need it, Father God, and that we will be open to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, before I start, or before I tap into the Word, we we are going to read from James 2, from verse 14 to 17, and then from verse 20 to 22. Verse 14 says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one, if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? Let that sink in. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And that, that, I had to read that a few times that it could actually sink in that faith on its own, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. You don't believe me? Let's read further. Verse 20 to 22 says, You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deed is useless? Verse 21, Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. So basically what that means is it's all good you say you believe in God. It's all good that you say you trust God for this. You trust God for a financial breakthrough. You trust in God for a better relationship. You have faith for new beginnings or new gifts. But what are you doing to unlock it? What are you doing to tap into that? You see, with breakthrough, because I believe that even myself, I've been, going, or I've been through a phase where 
I just saw dryness. I couldn't get to this next level. I couldn't unlock. I always wanted to go higher with God, but for some reason I was stuck. I was, I was getting nowhere. And I, and I knew it was me, but I didn't know what exactly it was. And you see, before breakthrough, there is a price that needs to be paid. It needs to be unlocked by a combination of faith and action. There's some of us that puts our faith into work, but still don't see results. And why is that? The, like I said, there's some of us that combines faith and action, but we still don't see breakthrough. And why is that? You see, you cannot access or you cannot unlock what you do not honor. And what, that, what I'm trying to say is, we may have seen someone go before or have what we do not have, and we don't honor that. We, we, we either judge them or we speak down on them, and that causes an automatic block on ourselves, or we're cursing ourselves. And then we wonder why are we not seeing fruit, why are we not getting what we want. We've been praying for years, but we're not seeing breakthrough. And that is because those who went before you, you have spoken bad about, or you've cursed, or you've, you've basically not honored that. And we need to get rid of the spirit where that we see progress in others and we get jealous or not jealous but we we are not happy about it. we need to honor that so that we can unlock it for ourselves another reason we may not be seeing fruit in our journey is because we, is because we've become familiar with we've become complacent with god in other words we we feel good we feel happy that we we felt the burning sensation or we felt God's spirit three weeks ago and we're happy with that and we think yes we've made it and we don't think or we don't realize that there's more to God than where we are currently at you see God is the perfect father and there's always more to him there's, there's never an ending you never know God fully you've never experienced God fully and there's always more to tap in and what I want to say is don't become comfortable with, with where you are currently because that can be a big blockage. Becoming familiar with your relationship with God. Becoming familiar with praying once or twice a day. Listening to or watching an online video now every second Sunday or every Sunday. Push for more. Seek more. Because there is definitely more. You see with humans, we get offered the pinky but then we take the whole hand or the whole arm or the whole body. God is standing with arms wide open but yet we only take a piece of the pinky. Why not do the same? Why not tap into God fully? Why not seek more, trust Him completely? There is so much more that God wants to give. And now, especially, is not the time to go quiet or to become familiar. Now that we have, some of us may have more time to spend with God or to seek God more. Some of us, our circumstances are different. But what I'm saying is, use this time to seek God more. There's so much more that God wants to give us. And that's why we need to tap into that. We need to seek more. There's more to discover. There's more to unlock. There's more to achieve. And there's way more growth than where you currently are. And I want to end on that note. Please seek more and dig deeper. And can we please pray to end this off? Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for that short message, Father God. And I pray that it was, has spoken to us in some way, Father. I pray that you will help us realize, Father God, that it is us causing our own blockage, Father God, that you have always been waiting with arms wide open, Father. I pray that you will set us free of any bondage, Father God, any curse we may have spoken or caused many years ago, months ago, weeks ago, Father God. I pray that you will set us free and block every chain, Father God. I pray that you will bind any demonic force that has caused blockage, Father God, for our breakthrough. 
I pray that we will see new levels in our relationship with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that our families will see your grace, Father God, that those where we lost hope, those we lost hopeful, Father God, will come to see that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that you will open our eyes, Father God, to see that there is more for us in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow, what a powerful word. What a reminder that there is more to God than what we know and what we see. And that constant hunger can really take us deeper into the things of God. Uh, thank you, Curtly, for that powerful word. Now, I, I want to just, just touch base with you. And I would not be long because we're just trying to shorten our messages. And I just want to touch base with you on the three mentals. And, and we, we had like three, four messages on the priesthood. And I shared with you, biblically, we, we are promised royal priesthood which is a prophetic mental as well because the spirit of Elijah is trusted to the church as well. So we look at the prophetic spirit, you look at the priesthood, and you look at the royalty, and these three mentals are trusted to the end time remnant. Uh, we have gone through all the intro of these messages, and, and today I just I was just so burdened to to start on this and uh, as 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 we advance in this topic more there is more that God has in store for us but one thing that I I learned and I've been so burdened recently is God has been ministering to me about sonship and what I feel uh, in my heart that the the wine skin where the new wine is poured out or the capsule or the the wrapping of these three mantles or the the grace of god that has been extended upon upon the remnant church is the wine skin of sonship what i mean by that is the greatest calling that you and i could ever have uh, and i know there's different graces upon us and I know they're different gifts in the body of Christ and I love the protocol and I honor every gift. But when we look at the desire of the, the heart uh, of, of the Father and how God views us, I, I see that the greatest calling over you and I as the sons and daughters of God or as the church is being the son of God. We are called the son of God. And by, I say the son of God and not the sons because when God sees us, he sees his son in us, which is Christ Jesus. So you and I are the corporate Christ. And the concept of sonship is not new only in the New Testament. It's not something that all of a sudden appears in the New Testament. When we look at the word of God and we look at the, the, the Adam and we see that Adam was the son of God. We look at now the nation of Israel, which was the foreshadow of the church. We are the spiritual Israel. God relates to the nation of Israel in the book of Exodus chapter 4. And in this particular chapter, this is the encounter that Moses is having with the very power and presence of God. There is the encounter of the burning bush and God is ministering to Moses and speaking to him heart to heart and this is what God said to Moses in verse 21 and says to Moses when you go to re go to return into Egypt Exodus chapter 4 verse 21 see that you do all those wonders which I have put in your hand before Pharaoh but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Verse 22, he says, You shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. God relates to the nation of Israel as a son. And not as just an ordinary son, but as a firstborn. And we, we will go through the text and, and we will go through a journey to have an understanding of what it means to be firstborn. Verse 23 says, And I say to you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I'm going to kill your son, your firstborn. So God comes in the scene after the nation of Israel has been in bondage 
preached for over 400 years and they cried out to God for help. And God comes in the sea and the Bible says that when he speaks to Moses, he says, I have come because I have heard the cries of my people. And when he speaks to Moses, he says that you must tell Pharaoh that Israel is my son and he is my firstborn and you must let my son go that he may serve him serve me now we see God sees the nation of Israel not as people not as just mere people but God sees nation in a corporate body and that corporate body he calls his son and then he calls the son not an ordinary son but a firstborn son and we have an understanding throughout the scriptures that there were certain privileges given to the firstborn son. There were certain rights uh, and there was a seat of honor that was given to the firstborn son. Now study in the next few weeks we are going to discover quite a bit on what it is, what it means to be the firstborn son. Now we understand God took the nation of Israel out of Egypt and God's view of the nation of Israel was as a firstborn son as we read. That's how he communicated about the nation. He did not just see them as people, he saw them as his very own, his firstborn. And then we see the, the, the deliverance happens and God delivers them by his mighty hand and there's a song of celebration in Exodus 15 and then we find that they are ended up in now in the wilderness of Sinai and now we find that the people start to to murmur and Bible takes us into Exodus chapter 19 and we read from the book of Exodus chapter 19 and Bible says in verse 1 in the third month when son of sons of Israel had gone forth out of the land of Egypt on this day they came to the wilderness of Sinai now so it's a three months that they are out of Egypt and Bible says in verse Two that they journeyed from Rephidim and came to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. By this time, God had already started to pour manna for them, and they had seen the supernatural miracle. In fact, they started to witness that supernatural power of God from the very Egypt where He brought plagues and He spared the Israelites. And now, Bible says, in the third month, they reached the desert called Sinai, and Bible says they put the tents in there. And Bible says, and Israel came there in front of the mount. So there was a mountain and verse 3 says, and Moses went up to God and God called him out of the mountain saying, you shall say to the house of Jacob, tell the sons of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Bible says, I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. To who? To myself. Because his words to Pharaoh, Pharaoh was, let my people go, let my son go that he may serve me. And now God reminds the nation of Israel, his corporate son, his firstborn, that I have bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Verse 5 says in chapter 19, and now if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant and you shall be peculiar treasure peculiar treasure to me not to anybody to me above all the nations for all the earth is mine verse 6 says you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation listen to this verse 6 and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the son, sons of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of people and laid before their faces all these words which Jehovah commanded him. Listen to this. So God introduces the nation as his firstborn to Pharaoh. And then when he finds this, this privilege or he gives them this privilege of giving them a word. And this is the first word that he releases over them. He says, I brought you out. You saw my mighty hand of deliverance and I bore you on the eagle's wing and I brought you to myself and he said that you are going to be a peculiar treasure to me. He says you are this 
this worthy treasure to me. You are my firstborn. And I, and you will be above all nations. It means I will give you the privilege of the firstborn. And I have set you, set a seat of honor and privilege for you. A place that no one else can deserve. He says, because you are my treasure. Listen to this. And he says, if you, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant. God is a covenant keeping God. And he says, that you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. Now we, we have, you know, this tribal mentality in the body of Christ. But here, when God released, relates to the priests, he says that you all are part of the kingdom. And that, and that kingdom is the kingdom of priests. It means each one of you are priest unto me. You are a, this peculiar treasure to me and you shall be the kingdom of priests. Not part of you will be the priest and part Part of you will be the king and part of you will be the prophets and part of you will be this and part of you will be that. He says all of you will be to me a kingdom of priests. And when we started these mentors and I say to you that particularly these three mentors are the portion of every single believer. And I love protocol, I love honor and, 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 and honor graces upon people and honor gifts upon people. But these three mentors, which is the priest mental and the royalty and also the prophetic mental is given to the body of Christ and that's how God related to the nation of Israel that you will be a kingdom of priests that each one of you will be priests unto me a holy nation so this is where the desire of God was mentioned in the Bible where he called out a holy nation and we all know in, in, the, in the epistles of Peter that we are called the holy nation but that the concept of holy nation started right there with Israelites. Now what happened? How did that God ended up dividing the priesthood and God ended up dividing the, the royalty and also bringing the tribes into different alignment? Why would God do that way? As in the scripture we find that he saw Israel as a corporate body. Where we see that his desire was for all of them to be a kingdom and the kingdom of priesthood and not just particular people so when we, when we so when we see the scripture we see that God viewed the nation of Israel as a corporate son and that corporate son was his firm firstborn Israel is my firstborn let my son go that he may serve me and now when we see God seeing the nation as a kingdom of priests it was his desire for each one of them to be in the priesthood God of God but now what happened why we see that the tribe were divided and there was also we see that there was priesthood was given to, to certain people and royalty was given to the certain tribes. Why they suddenly the tribalism came? What happened in the scripture? Because God's original intent for the nation of Israel was to be a corporate son. God's original intent for the nation of Israel was to be a one holy nation and one kingdom of priesthood. It means a king Kingdom of peace. Everybody should enjoy that right and privilege to be the priest. So what happened in between the lines? Now, the, the scripture provides us an answer. And this is where it really boggled me and troubled my mind so much. Because... After this, when, when Moses goes down from the mount to the people, he relays these messages, these words to the nation of Israel. Says that God has called all of us to be a nation, a holy nation, and we are going to be a kingdom of peace. It means there will be certain privileges given to us in the spirit realm. But in 20 now, God starts to set down his ordinance and Bible says God comes to the mount and there was a preparation because they had to wash themselves and they had to even you know make sure that no animal would come near the mountain there was a, a procedure that was set out because God himself is going to come down and his desire was to speak to the nation as a corporate body as his firstborn son called a a a Jacob as Israel now Bible speaks of it and Bible says that God came 
it comes down and God starts to speak and there we find the Ten Commandments are given to us in the book of Exodus chapter 20. And then after he has spoken, verse 18 speaks to us and there is a whole shift happening now from what we read in verse chapter 19 now to chapter 20 after God had spoken which he desired to speak to all of them after he had spoken to the nation now this is what we find in verse 18 chapter 20 verse 18 and all the people saw the thundering and lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. So when God spoke, they heard the thunder, they heard the lightning and they heard the trumpet and they heard the, they saw the smoke. So these were the four elements of nature that were present very, very powerfully at the mountain. And it was loud and it was evident to all the people of Israel and battle says when, when people saw the they trembled. They were afraid. They stood far off. In, in fact, they stepped back a bit when they saw how God manifested his great presence in their midst. Verse 19 says, and they said to Moses, and this is where the tables were turned. You speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear for God has come to test you so that his fear may be before your faces so that you may not sin. And people stood afar off and Moses draw near to the thick darkness where God was. Listen to this. Verse 20 says, as people stepped back, Moses went forward. And this is where everything was shifted. God's desire, which was, you know, I, I see Israel as my firstborn and he's my son and let him serve me, let him go. And when he says to Moses that the, the, I'm raising up a nation and a kingdom of peace, not part of it. In this particular text, people started to say, listen, you have God and let us rather hear from you. We don't need God. God. Why? Because all of a sudden, these different nature, these characters, and these, these lightnings and thunders and different aspects of God's presence were revealed to them, and they realized that they fall short, and they realized that they do not fit in the category where they could have this relationship with God and have Him face to face talk to them. And they said, No, 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 you talk, we rather listen to you. We are not worthy. We are, and Moses speaks to them and says don't be afraid and the Bible says people stepped afar it means they stepped backward from the mountain while God was speaking and as they did that the Bible says Moses went forward so now that's where everything was shifted that's where we find that the priesthood now will be established from a different lineage and that's how the different graces will come upon because now the prophetic word will be released from the mouths of God through the, through the prophets and there will be a prophetic utterances on different tribes but prior to this everything was seen as one in the corporate body which was called a nation of Israel and that was the firstborn. Now it's amazing and it's shocking that the nation of Israel now will be divided into tribes. They were and God honors those positions, those different tribes and everything but prior to this happening God did not see any tribes. God did not see them as people who are divided into different gifts and graces or whatsoever, God saw them as one unit. They fear, they fall short, they own their own guilt and shame and, and their all unworthiness within them caused them to step backward. God was moving forward towards them. And that's where many people even up until now, they rather hear the words of prophetic words from different people's mouth and they get excited about the prophets and I bless prophets. But there is more to your life that God is desiring. He wants to speak to you face to face. He wants to have that relationship with you face to face. But we rather hear words from other people and be excited than us 
having the privilege to see God face to face. Many have missed the mark. We're chasing after prophets. We're chasing after pastors. We're chasing after the apostles. Whereas God is desiring and he's speaking to the body of Christ. So the concept of the holy nation was birthed in, in Exodus. And now it comes to us in the fulfillment in the new body of Christ, which is the church. And that, that's where we find in, in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. And what does he say? He said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal peace to a holy nation, a people of possession. What did God say to the nation of Israel? That you are a peculiar treasure. So that you might speak of the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Listen to this. Who you who then were no pe- no not a people but now the people of God. Those not pitied before, comforted before, then now, then but now pitied or comforted or consoled. So the holy nation. The concept of holy nation of God addresses the church once again. And he says, you know what? Israel did not understood what I was desiring for them. That I wanted to see them as the firstborn. And now I'm calling you to be that holy nation. I'm calling my desire for Israel, which was, which is so petty. And I pray that Israel one day will see the hand of God and the salvation of Christ Jesus. But he says that church now becomes that spiritual Israel. And we become that holy nation. We become that royal priesthood. It means that each one of, of, of us have a mantle of priesthood upon our lives. Each one of us are called into royal because of Christ Jesus each one of us because he has called us kings and priests unto himself he has called us to be a holy nation a people of possession hallelujah so now in this light when we see the church we can't see the church and you can't see the church as a, a you know a body of believers that is scattered all over and everybody is doing their own thing let me say this when god sees the church he sees them as one nation it doesn't matter and i know the church is divided all over i know there's different doctrines denominations different gifts and we don't spare a moment where we don't bash each other and look down at each other but i want to say this to you when god sees the church he sees as one nation he sees as one kingdom of priests and kings he sees us as a peculiar treasure a people of God, a possession of God, as, as people whom he has purchased. So when God sees the church, he sees the body of Christ. So, so when we look at the scripture, that God, when God sees the church, he sees a corporate body of believers whom he has called and redeemed, and they are the royal priests of their kings and priests with him. He calls them the holy nation. And this body is the body of Christ, and he's the head over it. He's not the head over different bodies. He is the head of one body that is the church. It grieves my heart when people criticize the church. When believers criticize the church, they don't realize that they are the part of the same body. It's not that they're part of some different body that is more perfect than the one that they're criticizing. We all belong to the one body, irrespective of our denomination, irrespective of our different theologies and differences of colors and cultures and customs in the church. When God sees us, he does not see any of that. He sees his son. And he is the head over the church, which is the corporate son over this earth. When he sees the church, he sees his son. When he sees you, you are part of his body. He sees his son. And you're not the, and I want to close with this thought, you're not the son in one billion or seven billion, some numbers, no. When God sees you, he sees Christ. 
It means that if he is the firstborn, then you are the firstborn. You are in the firstborn position. He sees you as an individual, as the firstborn son. Why? Because Christ took your place. And you took his place. And that's why you could be seated in the heavenly places with him. Why? Because you are in a place of privilege of the firstborn son upon the throne. How could that be? Because when God sees you, he sees you as his son. He became your replacement. That's where the justification comes in. The concept of justification where somebody else takes a place. You are redeemed. So when God sees you, he sees you as a son and daughter. Not as a son and daughter in an ordinary manner where you are just a number in one billions of God's children upon the earth. No, 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 no. You are son and daughter of God as you are as a firstborn. And you have the privilege and right. And that's what gives you the privilege and right to be seated with him and when he sees you he sees his son when he sees the body of Christ he sees the son so the body of Christ the church represents the corporate body the corporate Christ upon the earth that is the privilege given to us and that was the desire of the father from the very beginning when he starts to relate himself to the nation of Israel that you are my son and now he comes to the church and he says you are a holy nation so each one of you have the privilege to hear from God each one of you have the privilege to love God and be loved by God. Each one of you have the privilege to be seated with Christ. Each, each one of you have the privilege to be adorned by God. Why? Because you are his son and daughter. And when he sees you, he sees his son. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that he is the firstborn and he remains the preeminent amongst all God's creation. In all things. It remains all powerful. That how much God has loved you and I. That we are not just a flyby or just something that happened and we love God and God loves us. No, it's not just a fairy tale. Just the understanding that you are the son of God gives you the privilege. It gives you, this is the new wine skin that the Bible speaks of. Every gift is wrapped in this revelation that you are the son and daughter of God. Every grace flows out of it. You can be gifted in doing things and you can be anointed to do certain things. But if you do not have the revelation of who you are in him, that you are his son and daughter, you have missed the mark. And I want to encourage you with this. In spite of all that is happening in your life. Find your comfort and peace in this that you are the son of God and you have this privileged position in him. That you're seated with him. But when, when God sees you, he not just sees as ordinary believer or a Christian. He sees you as a part of a peculiar treasure. He sees you as a part of a kingdom of priests. He sees you as part of a kingdom of kings. People that are his and he's theirs. You are his possession. Prized possession. That he would give his only begotten son for you. So you could be brought into his family. Into the, into the place of a corporate son. That when he sees you, he sees Christ in you. Christ becomes your righteousness and takes your place. Bless you. We're going to carry on with this series on the sonship. I'm so burdened about it. And I will close with this prayer with you. And I want to say this to you. Circumstances might be dictating to you. And I'm in so, I'm in so much pain recently when I hear so many of our people have lost jobs. And each one of us are affected differently. And I want to say this to you. Through these difficult times. Find your comfort and peace in knowing that you are a son and daughter of God. And if you have that kind of privilege, God is going to bring help that you need. Because sons cannot be denied. Hallelujah. Sons cannot be denied. Sons cannot be rejected. Sons cannot be held back. They have an access to heavenlies. And that's what God said to the nation of Israel. The all earth is mine. And if all earth is his. And all the fullness in it is his. 
then the sons have the privilege to benefit from that position. And if you could find yourself in that, in that mindset, in that peace, in the revelation of who you are in him, I want to say this to you. Heavens will open up over your life. And I have been experiencing in this month how God has been ministering to my heart about this. And I pray the same for you. Let me pray for you. Father, I just bless your people this morning, oh God. I pray, God, that we, the corporate body, will be unveiled during this time, God, as the Son, the corporate Son, Christ, in Jesus' name. That when the world will see us, they will see Jesus in us. And Father, when we see us, we will see Jesus in us, the hope of glory. I pray, God, that the heavens will open up those who are going through this depression and discouragement and despair this time. Lord, I pray, let their strength and comfort come from this word, that they are your sons and daughters more than anything else. And God, that we will not be denied in the name of Jesus. Bless each one of us and let your peace and comfort, shalom, to come upon people during this time. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to bless God for this tremendous privilege to share the word of God with you. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It's my name, Ishtiak Samuel Gill. And please also like our page on Facebook, Revival Fellowship FGC. And it is, we have a lot of other things happening. There's daily devotions that are going on. We have tremendous response from all over. And please do like our page. You like and subscribe to our channel. Write to us. Send us a message or comment to do something. And we will surely get back to you. Send us your prayer requests. We are eagerly waiting for all of that. And we are standing with you. You all in our thoughts and prayers during this time. We love and appreciate you. And I want to honor God for the Family Revival Fellowship. And I just want to appeal to our family that please sow into uh, the non-perishable items. We are also doing a grocery hamper drive this month again. A lot of our families have lost jobs and we are, we are really trusting God to extend a helping hand. So if you're one of those who, who is privileged in this time to have not lost their income and have enough at home, please consider those in need. Uh, you can, you know, give us a call or SMS. The details will be after this message. Don't go away and, and just take note of those details. Send us a message and we'll get back to you and see how we can get all the help that we need to reach out to those in need during this time. And there are many of them and some families have small children. Be considered of those in need reach out to somebody and be a blessing during this time may the lord bless you richly we love you and we appreciate you god bless you have a fantastic day ahead looking forward to seeing you again just shortly uh, on wednesday we're starting our midweek service so we'll be seeing you shortly god bless you